Yeah, what's good, y'all? So, I tried to wait till Friday, man. You know how I am about these, you know, early releases. You know, I don't really like to talk about them until um, the day of the release. But for some reason, this Mac Miller album just kept calling. And, you know, I said, fuck it and listen to it. I got to say, you know, it wasn't what I thought it was, but it wasn't bad. You know, I definitely got the vibe of watching movies with the sound off, Macadelic, you know what I mean? And a little bit of Blue Slide Park all in one. Even though it's like Blue Slide Park is his debut album, I still feel like he matched all of his sounds in one. But this is definitely dope as hell, man. You know, um, features, you got Absol in that joint, Lil B, Miguel, uh, Chief Keef, surprisingly, and Little Dragon. Definitely an album of great music on here. You know, it's a little bit of everything on here. But let's go ahead and talk about it. You got the first track, Doors, you know, basically him talking is, in a way, I'm, I'm quite sure, some type of metaphor for, you know, either walking out the door to get the day started or, you know, that's what I took from it. But I didn't really like it. I, I wish he would have had a song. Then it goes into brand name. Definitely that beat and that sample was crazy. You know, I think he had some of the wittiest bars on this song. You know, witty lines as well. Definitely a good fucking song. No... You know, it wasn't rushed at all, but it's just at the end of the day, I mean, brand name is just, a lot of people love brand name shit, <laughs> you know. Uh, goes into Rush Hour, definitely love that melodic beat. Uh, I definitely feel the, the uh, hook on this song, you know what I mean? If you take it for what it's worth, it's pretty deep. Vivid lyrics, you know, I definitely could relate to this song. It's definitely a great one. And this is the Mac Miller that I was looking for, and I'm like, hell yeah, you know, this is the Mac that I was waiting for because I was kind of sketchy on how he was going to come back his third time around because he'd been gone for like two years. But definitely a good one. Then it goes into two matches featuring Ab, so jazziness, you know, great vibe record. You know, those two just doing what they do. You know, two matches, these two matches on the record, you know what I mean? It's not bad. Ab, so came through, delivered as always, and... You know, it was a fun record. I like this record better than I think App was on Mac last album. I do believe I didn't like that song too much, but this is definitely a good record. A hundred grandkids, you already know I don't really like that song. I mean, I heard it in its entirety, you know, because I listened to the album twice before I wanted to talk about it, and I still wasn't really feeling a uh, hundred grandkids. I I feel like the the last part of the album, I mean, the song was pretty cool, but I still was like, nah, it's not a song I'm gonna go back to. Uh, Time Flies featuring Lil B. Now, this threw me off at first because I'm like, Lil B, like, what the fuck these two got in common? But you listen to it, and it's like Lil B is basically, you know, narrating the hook, you know, and over a jazzy beat. Uh, the content was decent, you know. I went back and forth on this song if I liked it, did I not like it, you know. And by the third listen, it's fair, you know what I mean? But other than that, yeah, probably some people won't fuck with it like that. Um, Moving on to Weekend Feature Miguel, definitely a cool vibe, uh, fun record. I, I definitely respect his lyrics on this. I, I like his flow on there. Miguel on the record, but it's like you barely hear him, you know, unless that was just my uh, first listen. But you hear him on the record, but I was expecting something more of on the lines of how when Wale had Miguel on the record, I was expecting something like that. But it's still a cool song. I fuck with that song. Uh, going into Clubhouse, I just thought it was okay. You know, the production on that one wasn't all that. The Clubhouse was just cool, you know. Uh, it wasn't really nothing too special. Number nine in the bag, I definitely feel he went off on that joint. Like, he just went fucking bananas. I don't know what it was about that song, but as I'm listening to it, I'm like, yo, this nigga is going off. You know what I mean? I definitely fuck with that. Break the Law, you already know how I feel about that. Definitely fuck with that record as well. Uh, Perfect Circle slash Godspeed. Now, I do like that song. He split the second half uh, song basically from Perfect Circle to Godspeed. I like how he put all that together. And throughout the project, you hear like conversations throughout it, so it definitely made sense. And I like the little narration at the end of Godspeed. Um, but Godspeed is definitely a record that I fuck with. I, I love that record. Personally, you know, I listen to that shit no longer than, or no more than 10 times. You know, I just it's something about that record. If you hear the lyrics and you kind of understand, and if you know me, I like the darker more, you know, introspective type records. This year have been a lot for dark theme albums and definitely I, I'm relating to a lot of them. You know what I mean? I was at a place in my life where I was, you know, dark or whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day I fuck with that record. When uh, When in Rome is another good one. You know, I didn't know what to expect when I heard the title, but I definitely feel like that's a great one. You know, it's it's not the best but it's not the worst, you know, but it's a good listen with me. 
uh, Rain or Shine. I never did like Mac Miller when he does a singy, songy type shit. On Euphoria, I did. If it was something like that, I would have fucked with it, but ROS, I really don't like it. Uh, Cut the Check feature in Chief Keef, that was horrible. I'm sorry I expected so much from that record, but at the end of the day, Chief Keef verse wasn't bad. I'm not going to say it was a horrible verse, but it just seemed out of place with him actually trying to rhyme and say sort of witty shit. It just didn't fit the mode. Going to Ascension, that definitely uh, dark you know, depressed mood on this record, but I fucking love it. You can hear his pain. I love the honesty. Definitely a dope record. Uh, Jump, another great um, bouncy beat type record. I love the flow, the content. It makes you think about life in a way. You know, if you really sit down and think about it, you know, from what he's saying with the song and all his lyrics, it definitely make you think. And the last track, The Festival, featuring Lil Dragon, I definitely like this song. The beat was amazing. I definitely love the melody and how they let the end of the record uh, end with the instrumentation. I, I thought that was pretty dope. You know, he did what he did, but that's kind of like my second favorite song on here. If I had to pick five songs, it would be Break the Law, The Festival, Ascension, Jump, um, Perfect Circle, Slash Godspeed to be my five favorite records on this album. Seven and a half out of ten, 12 out of 17 records. I fuck with the production, about an eight out of ten. Definitely a dope record. And I forget the name of the record that um, Tyler produced. I think I think it's the festival. I could be wrong, but that record, I think Tyler produced one of them, and that shit is crazy. You can hear the production, and you know it's Tyler. But other than that, y'all let me know what y'all think. You know, I'm out.